Hello and welcome to Wikipedia Explained today on voluntary simplicity. You can find the full article on Wikipedia at simple underscore living. So what is voluntary simplicity? It's about the voluntary practices to simplify your life, to reduce your possessions, the things you have, or increase your self-sufficiency, the things you need from outside. There's a coined phrase, which is to be happy with less. Why would you choose to live a simple life? Well, for example, for spiritual reasons, because you believe in it, or to be healthier by reducing stress, for example, for a better work-life balance, for example, to have more time for family and friends, to reduce your ecological footprint and the amount of resources you need, or to show your protest against current social political developments in the policy arena. Let's look at the history. Simple living goes back to really old religious and spiritual traditions. Simple living was taught by historic figures like Buddha or Jesus. But finally, Richard Gregg coined actually the term of voluntary simplicity in his book, The Value of Voluntary Simplicity in 1936. Let's look at practices. It starts with identify the essential and eliminate the rest. You consume less, therefore you demand less, therefore you need less money, therefore you need to work less. And as a result, you can spend more time to pursue other interests of you, for example, to increase your quality of life by committing yourself to arts or to do volunteering work. Let's have a look at the quote by Tracy Smith, who says, the more money you spend, the more time you have to be out there earning it and the less time you have to spend with the ones you actually love. If you consume less, you also spend less money and assuming you continue to work, you acquire more savings. And as a result, you can do an early retirement. As a conclusion, you have succeeded in life when all you really want is only what you really need. Let's take a look at existing examples. Well, there's a 100 thing challenge to reduce all your possession to 100 things. Or the small house movement to live in small mortgage-free low impact dwellings such as log cabins or beach huts. But how to get started? Well, it follows the do-it-yourself ethics, which is the principle of undertaking necessary tasks yourself rather than having others who are more skilled or experienced complete them for you. In simple terms, stop consuming and start producing. Let's look at food. Start to grow your own food to increase your self-sufficiency and to reduce the dependency on money and the economy to pay for your food. You can reduce your carbon footprint by eating locally. If we look at the idea of food miles, which is the number of miles food has traveled from farm to table, if you produce locally, your food doesn't need to travel and therefore you have really low food miles. And by producing and consuming your food locally, you begin to understand how long it actually takes to grow food. Voluntary simplicity in food is also connected to your diet. And it's often referred to a simple diet, which means a vegan, which is a plant-based diet or a Gandhi diet. Let's turn around and look at the role of technology. Technology can make a simple lifestyle with a mainstream culture easier and more sustainable. Let's just look at all the new possibilities of the internet, solar PV, wind, water turbines to produce electricity from natural resources. But there are also hidden sides of new technologies like mass surveillance, political repression, or a rebound effect as a result from an increase in energy consumption. What about the role of advertising? Well, cutting down on advertising, particularly on TV, is a key ingredient to make it easier to live a simple life and to not be distracted by all the advertisements on, on TV. What about some shared connections? So there's a connection to environmentalism, which is if you politically reject, for example, genetic modification and nuclear power. It can even turn so far that you say you follow green anarchism and you boycott everything and live simplicity at a really much lower scale, for example, in eco-villages. There's also a connection to deep ecology, which promotes simple living to limit the free exploitation of the planet by humans. 
And finally, what about economics? Simple living in economics is called simple prosperity. And it just essentially asks three questions. What is the point of all our commuting and consuming? What is the economy for? And finally, why do we seem to be unhappier now than when we began our initial pursuit for rich abundance? That was Simple Living in short. And if you want to read the full article, go on Wikipedia and check out Simple Living.